The Loire Valley in central France is a UNESCO World Heritage Area that is home to over 300 chateaux. Visiting this region is like stepping into a fairy tale filled with architectural wonders ranging from imposing medieval fortresses to breathtaking Renaissance castles and palatial country estates. The region is quite large and can easily take multiple days to fully explore all of the picturesque towns and the architectural splendor of the chateau, but I only had a single day to visit, so I made the most out of the time I had. Come join me as I go on an organized day trip from Paris to visit three of the most famous chateaux of the region known as the Garden of France, Chenonceau, Amboise, and Chambord. Ready? Let's go. to go on a day trip to the Loire Valley, which I'm really excited about. I haven't been to the Loire in the Loire, oh my goodness, it's a little early, uh, in many, many years. Last time I was there was 2005 and I haven't been back since, so I'm pretty excited about it. So I'm about to meet up with the group. Um, I'm going on like a little organized um, tour bus thing, which you now has its pluses and minuses, but in this case, um, this is basically the ideal fit for me since I only have a day. Um, so I'm about to head over to where the group is meeting to get started. For those of you wondering about the logistics of the trip, I booked the excursion with Blue Fox Travel on the Viador site. I'll leave the link in the description below. It was 256 US dollars for a full day trip, which was pricey, but I wanted that small group experience where I could actually hear and speak to our guide instead of being on a bus and being one of like 50 other people. So I decided to pay a bit extra to have the small group. There are definitely cheaper options out there to visit the Loire on a day trip though, if you poke around. After a couple of hours drive in the van, we arrived at the first chateau of the day, Chenonceau. I actually visited this one back in 2005, and I remembered it as one of my favorites, so I was excited to see if it was as impressive in real life as it was in my memories. The day was going to be a scorcher. I could feel the heat immediately after exiting the van. I was visiting in August and had the unfortunate luck of touring during a massive heat wave. Thankfully, we didn't have to wait outside for entry. This is the line to get in. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. Very happy to escape the sun and head straight inside. This is the gallery inside Shenanzo. I forgot to bring in my regular glasses, so I either have to wear my sunglasses or walk around a little bit blind. Ooh, don't need the glasses though to see that this view is absolutely amazing. It's crazy to think how much history is here. Centuries of work went into building this place. Actually, a lot of women um, contributed to building up this castle, which is very cool. There's a long line of ladies that helped make this place what it is today. That is one of the things that I love about this chateau, the rich female history behind it. The original structure here was from medieval times, dating from the 12th and 13th centuries. The only part that remains today is this tower, the Tour de Marc. The building we visit today was built under the guidance of Catherine Brissonnet between 1513 and 1517, and there are exhibits inside the chateau that delve much more deeply into the stories of the many women who brought this place to life. The insides of the chateau are free for exploring, but don't expect inside to be any less crazy than the outside. It is. You'll get to see various bedrooms, kitchens, and public areas, but to me it's really the views and the exterior of the property that are the highlights. The inside is nice, but it's not going to really knock your socks off. After I was done inside, it was time to go out and explore the grounds. Just having a little walk through the gardens outside the chateau. It's much nicer out here. It is hot, but it feels good to be out of the crowds. It's a little intense inside. Just on the other side of that iconic view of Shenanso, it really is just a picture-perfect postcard, which is why it's on so many of them. Just walking around the gardens on the other side of the chateau. The gardens on this side are much prettier. And there's a fountain in the middle. Oh my gosh, what I would not give to just jump right into it right now. I don't know how warm it is outside, but it's hot and there's no shade here. So that's a good thing to know. Good thing to keep in mind, bring water, bring a hat. I probably should have done that too.
After a lovely stroll in the gardens, it was time to bid farewell to Chedenso and head off to our next chateau, Amboise. The royal chateau d'Amboise was one of the favorite sites of French kings during the Renaissance. Located right in the town of Amboise, the chateau sits on the banks of the Loire River, overlooking the valley and offering its guests magnificent panoramic views. The history of this site goes back centuries. The initial trenches of the chateau were dug all the way back in the 4th century AD. You enter the interior of the chateau via the former foot soldiers' passageway, which is decorated with the coats of arms of the chateau's various owners, from the 11th century all the way to the 19th. The free guide brochure they provide is actually quite helpful with tons of good detail on the incredibly complex history, but what I really found cool were these histopads. They're interactive tablets that allow you to stop and scan various time portal stations all around the chateau so that you can see what the room may have looked like back in its heyday as you explore the interior. Up at the top of the Chateau d'Amboise, the views up here are amazing. This helix ramp was the last part of the interior before emerging out onto the terrace gardens. Walking around outside now in the gardens. That was really neat. I had never been to this one before. Again, an insane amount of history inside. It's almost like incomprehensible for an American. It's different inside than um, Chen and So, obviously. Different places, different histories, slightly different eras. But it was pretty cool. That was really enjoyable. I spent a fair bit of time out in the gardens. Like Chen and So, walking around outside the chateau was probably my favorite part. finished the chateau tour. Now I'm walking through the village of Amboise. I'm off to get some lunch. It's very narrow here. Everything is very tight together. Narrow little alleyways. The cars just barely managed to squeeze. There's one coming up in front of me now. As you can see, very, very narrow but it's beautiful. Couldn't ask for a more delightful place to walk around. So this is a small town, but it is very well touristed. So there are no lack of choices for lunch. There's a lot of people here, a lot going on, um, but it's very, very cute. I'm just kind of doing a lap, trying to figure out what restaurant I want to sit at. I think I might just go with whoever has the coldest water at this point. I ended up just grabbing a quick pizza before meeting back up with the group for a small wine tasting at a local shop. It was a nice little bonus activity, and French wine certainly never disappoints. Then it was back on the bus to head to the final chateau of the day, Chambord. I had also visited Chambord back in my college days. It definitely looked different this time with all the scaffolding, major renovations being done at the time of my visit. Okay, here we are at Chambord. It's the third and final chateau of the day. Uh, this chateau is the baby of Francois le Premier. Um, this castle is, it's huge. Huge is an understatement. It's probably one of the Renaissance period's most awe-inspiring constructions and it's the largest chateau in the Loire Valley. This engineering marvel was built in 1519 and was originally used as a hunting lodge. It's a heck of a side residence for someone's hobby. The free provided tour brochure here is also quite good, but Chambord is a great place to wander through without a specific plan, and wander I did. No matter how seemingly lost I became, the layout is designed so that you always somehow end up back at the chateau's heart, the eye-catching double spiral staircase. This building actually has a total of 77 staircases, so you're never at a loss for options to take you upstairs. I explored the interior for a while before heading up to what was probably my favorite part, the roof. I've made it to the top. Jump. 
then headed back on down to see the rest of the chateau and its surrounding property. So you can see there is scaffolding on all the towers, which is unfortunate for my visit, but it's great they're restoring everything. Um, this work is scheduled to be done by 2024. The guide thinks that this is kind of part of the uh, ramp up for the Olympics, trying to spruce everything up. Despite all the scaffolding, some of you may be wondering why this beautiful estate seems vaguely familiar. And for all you Disney fans out there, this is the castle that inspired Beauty and the Beast. Walking out through the gardens of Chambord, they're nice, but compared to the other two gardens we've seen today, these are definitely the least impressive of the three. Still very pretty though. And of course, the backdrop for them is nothing short of spectacular. So that's it for today. We are about to get back into the van and drive back to Paris. Okay, so we are back in Paris. Overall, I was pretty happy with the experience. It was a little expensive for a day trip, but I thought that the quality of the product was really good. It was a small group. There were only seven of us. It was a nice van. The guide was really great. They definitely gave us a good amount of time to explore each chateau. We had between an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half at each, which was a good amount of time to walk around and get a feel for the place. Um, I think if you're somebody who really wants to take your time and go through everything, look at all the art, look at all the exhibits, then a date trip from Paris probably isn't the right move for you. It's about three hours each way from Paris, so it's a long day. You know, we met the group at 6.45 this morning and it's 8.15 and they just dropped us off. But overall, um, I really like the three chateaus that they picked. I, I think they were a good choice. If you were only gonna see three, then those were definitely the three to see. So overall, really happy with it. Um, very hot, very tired. I know I look a little bit gross. So thanks for coming along with me today. I hope you had fun and hope this inspired you to go on your own Dora Valley adventure. And I'll see you next time. I've got tons of videos up from previous adventures, so check out one of the playlists above, and I hope you'll subscribe to join me on what's upcoming. Appreciate everyone for watching, and happy travels!